For the longest time, the Indiana Pacers were the most boring team in the league. They were literally selling tickets for $5 just to get fans to attend their games. Their games at one point had the lowest attendance rate in the whole league. And it was very hard to watch. And it was confusing because if you look at their team, they had one all-star in DeMontis Sabonis. And then he was also surrounded by a bunch of great players like Karis LeVert, like Miles Turner, like TJ McConnell, like Malcolm Brogdon. But they were terrible and even their own fans just could not watch them. They weren't going and they weren't watching. The stigma around the Pacers for the longest time, and it was a kind of a stigma that Paul George put on them, is they're comfortable with being average. Paul George said this in an interview after he left the Pacers to go to OKC. He said they had a chance to go out there and get a top tier forward, and I believe the top tier forward was Anthony Davis, but they didn't go get him because they were comfortable with being a 6 or a 7 seed every year. That's just how they roll, and that's why he wanted to leave because Paul George wanted to win. And it was really true, bro, because I don't remember any time the Pacers was like a top five seed in the East. I always remember them being like a sixth or a seventh or eighth seed and playing like the best team in the first round and just losing. That's just how it always happened. And they were always average. And literally, out of left field, they made a trade for probably a cornerstone for the future. They made a trade for Tyree Salaburn, and they ended up sending their all-star, Demondis Sabonis, for the Kings, who at that time were trying to make a play and push. And ever since then, it's been terrible for them. Um, I will talk about them, but it's not their video. It's about the, the Pacers. They ended up getting a guy in Tyrese Halliburton. And it's been working out very well. Now, in that trade, they also got Buddy Hill, who at time, when he's hot, and he's been hot with this team, he has been really, really exciting to watch. And if you look at the games, man, if you actually watch Pacers games, especially their home games, Sometimes they're packed out nowadays because you got a guy like Tyree Tyler that gets the crowd rocking. And then you got a guy like Buddy Hill who when he's on, he's on one of the most fire players when they're on in the league. Uh, one of the best shooters that we've had in the league probably of all time, man. If you look at Buddy Hill's stats, man, the numbers are just, the numbers are crazy. And when he's on, man, he's on fire and he's fun to watch. And you can see that because there's a lot of fans in the, sta in the stadium now. And then... They also made made a trade for me that I felt like it wasn't the best trade, but it was the most important trade. They traded Torrey Craig for a guy like Jalen Smith for when he got his opportunity, he was hooping. I believe when he got his opportunity, when DeAndre Ian went out, he was having a double-double. He was completely hooping. Now, most of that was because, yes, you're playing with Chris Paul. But then you see him on this team, and he's still doing the same thing. And now you see why the Suns drafted him at number 10, because the future is bright for that kid. The future is very bright. All these trades that they made made this Pacers team very, very exciting to watch the second half of the season. Now, if you pay attention to the record... It looks terrible since the trade. It looks terrible. I believe that they only won like four games. But if you're actually watching the games, they have been one of the most exciting teams to watch. Their new additions have brought a lot of life to this team. And with the consistent injuries of Miles Turner and Malcolm Brogdon, guys like Oga Batase, Isaiah Jackson, Dwayne Washington Jr. have been getting very, very, very huge opportunities to play good minutes because... They're down a lot of players. They're down a lot of players. TJ McConnell's been out. He's out for the whole season. Miles Turner, I don't think he's coming back. And Michael Brown has been in and out the lineup. So those guys are getting a lot of opportunity. Especially Dwayne Watson Jr. Dwayne Watson Jr., they found a gem in him. He has that scoring six-man mode to him. He's really fun to watch, especially when he's on. I remember that one move he hit RJ with um, when they played the Knicks at Madison Square Garden. He went through the legs, spin, step back three. That was so far. But he's really nice, really nice. And then Isaiah Jackson, um, I believe they picked him in the first round. He's finally getting minutes, and he's been playing really well, especially when they pair him and um, Jalen Smith together. They've been hooping. They've been playing really well. And Golga Batase, Golga Batase was a lottery pick. I know y'all remember that picture of, of him uh, next to Zion in media day. And he had like one person. Zion had like literally everybody. But <laughs> Golga Batase has been hooping, man. He's been hooping with the opportunity. And I believe he's starting. But their three acquisitions, Tyrese and Jalen and Buddy, have been hooping. Hooping. Tyrese has been averaging 17 points and 9 assists while shooting 49% from the field and 40% from 3. And he has been the number, the number one option. Some nice is Buddy, but most nice is Tyrese. And Tyrese has been hooping. Um, Buddy Hill, all of a sudden, has turned into a playmaker out of left field. 
<laughs> out of left field, he's turned into a playmaker, averaging 19 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists, shooting 44% from the field and 33% from the three. And Jalen Smith, who would have known? You give him minutes, he's going to pr- he's gonna bring production to the team. He's averaging 25 minutes per game uh, as of Indiana Pacer, and he has been averaging 13 points, 8 rebounds, shooting 55% from the field while also shooting 38% from the three. And you see why the Suns picked him at 10. If they tap into that potential, him next to Tyrese can be amazing. That pick and roll is already something that's doing really good for them, bro. Doing really, really good. And then, like I said, Isaiah Jackson, he's also hooping. He's also benefiting from having a real point guard like Tyrese that's going to find you before he gets his own. Now, with Malcolm Brogdon, Miles Turner, Buddy Hill being very good pieces that they will be able to trade this offseason to probably get more young pieces back. Their future looks really, really exciting, man. They're going to have a lottery pick. They might even have two, if I'm not mistaken. I believe they made a trade for our first-round pick, the Cavs. So it won't be a lottery pick, but it'll be another first-round pick. So they're going to have two first-round picks, most likely. You can get a guy like Jaden Ivey. If I'm not mistaken, he is from Indiana. He will fit perfectly next to this team. Because, yes, you already drafted Chris Dorte last year. Last year, But Chris Dorte is 6'6". He can play the three. He's been playing the three most of the season. So you have a lineup with... Um, Tyrese Halliburton, Jaden Ivey, Chris Dorte. That could be a really, really fun, bro. Really, really fun. And then if you want to get a big, <laughs> the bigs this draft have been, they're like otherworldly. Jabari Smith killing in the uh, March Madness right now. Paolo Benchero, we all see him. Chet Holmgren, everybody loves Chet Holmgren. They got a lot of options they can do, man. So this future for this team that was once called very boring, which they were. They were really, really boring. <laughs> we all love Simone if you love Malcolm Brown and Miles Turner, but they just were so hard to watch because it was boring. But now they made a real trade. They have a cornerstone piece in Tyrese Halliburton. They have other young guards and young players around him like Jalen Smith, like um, Chris Dorte, like Dwayne Washington Jr., Goga Batase, Isaiah Jackson, and then you got young talent coming in in the offseason. When you make those trades, you trade Malcolm Brogdon, Miles Turner, Buddy Hill. You can get other young talent around the league, and then when you go into the draft, you get a guy like Jaden Ivey who is putting the league on notice, hooping in the, in the tournament, going crazy. So the future for this team is bright. I'm finally happy, they're happy that they did a rebuild. They started a rebuild. And man, maybe this rebuild might not be too long, bro. They get Jaden Ivey. They roll out with this team for next year. They can go right back to making the playoffs. Well, hopefully they make a higher seed in the top five. But other than that, man, that's it for this video, man. Sorry I've been gone for a little bit, man. I, I went on vacation. But, and I had my um, my grandmother's funeral. But other than that, man, we will be back to dropping consistent videos literally every day or every other day. So I will talk to you guys later. Peace out.